Hey, Dan Anton here, and this is the tutorial video for your dashboard of CrowdSearch.me. And right here at the top, it'll tell, you, it'll tell you your total number of credits, and you can go ahead and add more if you need more. And then uh, we'll list your total active campaigns, the total number of credits that you spent for today, and this number will change throughout the day. So if you have active campaigns that are spending credits, this number will increase as the day goes on. You, you'll also know your total credits spent for the month, and then we just remind you that one search boost is one credit and one minute of dwell time is also one credit. So you can edit your profile here through this link, change your email and your password if you want to. Um, down below here we have your campaign list and this little box is a search filter box so you can just quickly enter a, a name of your campaign that you want to filter by and then hit enter which is great for organization purposes if you have a lot of campaigns. So your campaign name is listed first followed by your current rank and this rank will update every day. You also have a refresh button here which you can use if you're impatient and want to know your rank throughout the day. Um, you have your daily credits spent and again this number will increase as this campaign spends credits throughout the day. We let you know if smart rank is enabled or not and then you can very quickly turn off a campaign or turn it on depending on what you want. Um, I'll just go ahead and take you through the process of adding a new campaign. So you would just enter in the campaign name, the URL, you would enter your keyword, and then select the country version of Google that you care about most, whether it's .com, .co, .co.uk, etc. So .com is the default though, it's most common, most popular. You also have this option here to use exact URL match. Default is leaving it off, which you'll find any any um, URL for this entire domain for this keyword, it'll report that back. But if you click exact, it'll only report back uh, this particular URL and keyword combination. So that's completely up to you how you want to use that. If you care, if you don't care that much, just leave it as global and it'll be fine. All right. So when you click next step, it would take about a minute or two. So just be patient with that because it's analyzing the search volume for that keyword. It's trying to find your keyword rank, and uh, it's going to use all that data in the next step. And I'll go to an existing campaign that I have here. And this is something, this is similar to what you would see after um, activating your campaign and going through that process. So it'll tell you the start date for your campaign. It'll tell you the starting rank that, uh, that you started at when you created this campaign, uh, your current rank, and then it'll also tell you, you know, some, some credit info here. Your keyword search volume, and this is your monthly search volume. So this number here, I'm just going to address that a lot of people sometimes uh, submit tickets and they're curious that the search volume is much lower than what they find in Keywords Ad Planner. And the reason for that is Keyword uh, Google AdWords Planner is using phrase match, which is not exact match, which is what this system is, and it's a lot more accurate to use exact match. So it's very, it's the really quick simple way to explain that uh, to you. So this data is from semrush.com and their data is very accurate for exact match. So that's what we use. All right, so you'll see some of this information just uh, that you saw on your dashboard. So the campaign names here, the URL. So for this particular one, this is a, an exact match we're using for this, U for this keyword. That's just the way we wanted to set this particular one up. And you, you won't be able to edit once a campaign is created, you can't change the URL, the keyword, and the search engine because it's it's locked in. If you want to change anything, just create a new campaign basically and delete this one. All right, internal browsing. This is the process of the search uh, the search user you, uh, going to your page, going to this main domain, and then or going to this URL that you input in the system. And then after it's on there, it's going to start browsing other internal pages for your site just to create that natural process and help with that dwell time and just show that content is being consumed on your site. But if you want to turn that off, you have that you have that option and it'll just stay on this URL the entire time that you specify. You also have an option to turn off random browsing and if you do that, you can specify what URLs you want them to visit. So if you have specific interpage URLs that you want them to visit, you can enter them here up to five. If you leave it on random, which is what I always recommend anyway, it'll hit those URLs, you know, a lot of numbers, it'll eventually get to them anyway, as the crowd search army gets through and does these searches, you know, eventually it'll, it'll visit those sites, I'm sure, those inner pages. But you have that, you have that power to do that. Smart rank. Now we recommend keeping this on because what this does is it looks at your search volume 
and it looks at your current rank and it looks at these two factors every day and adjusts from there. So what it tries to do, you know, this algorithm has been, I've been tweaking it for the last year and a half basically and trying to find the sweet spot for these numbers. And I think I've got it down pretty well. So always enable smart rank if you can. Now there are times where you're not going to be able to enable smart rank because it'll say disabled due to, and then the reasons are search volume is either too low, so we can't, the algorithm doesn't know what to do with it, um, and or the keyword rank is not, it's not ranking. So if it says NA here, that means that we, we can't use it because we need to know where you're ranking first. And um, the system works like this. If you're ranking within the top 120 results, smart rank can be used if your search volume is high enough. If you're not ranking the top 120 results, we basically have to go to what we call method two. And method two uh, essentially pairs your URL with your keyword and then clicks the listing. And that helps drive relevancy. So what I mean by that is, all right, let's look at this one. Let's say that this URL is not, um, is not showing in the results for this keyword within the top 120 results. So what would happen is it would, it would come here and I've already conducted this search. Basically you would do the keyword search, Jean Grey actress, and then space and then the URL and then click search. And then naturally in almost every case, it's going to be going to be the first listing and then it can click the listing. So it still conducts an organic search, but it's what I call a relevancy search because it's, it's, it's kind of a workaround. If you're not within the top 120 results, this is how we have to uh, kind of get around that. And then this process builds relevancy and eventually will push, push you up into the top 120 results so we can go back to uh, normal organic search method one. All right, now sometimes this search here for method two, it'll use, uh, it'll put the URL first, followed by the keyword. Maybe it'll use different uh, punctuation and stuff in, in, inside of the uh, keyword itself. So again, random factors are built in to all aspects of this uh, system. Uh, going back to smart rank though, uh, if you want, you can manually change the searches per day the minutes spent per day, uh, per visit, and you can change it through the sliders or these arrows, or you can just enter the number, you know, if you want like this, a lot of different ways for you. And then it'll tell you your daily credit cost. Uh, if you have smart rank available, I recommend just keeping it on because it's, it's a system that we've really put a lot of work into adjusting. And even with smart rank on, we report, you know, what you're going to have three searches per day for this particular one with approximately two minutes. This isn't in stone either, this changes every day. So don't get hung up on, wow, it doesn't look normal if I have three exact searches per day. It's not always gonna be that way, it's going to change. There's, like I said, there's random randomness built into this entire program from every aspect of it. And then we approximate the number of credits that you're gonna have spent for this campaign uh, within a 24 hour period. And then you can delete the campaign if you want, <clears throat> but if you're happy with everything, just click save. And if you click view activity, this will show you a rundown of the last um, few searches that have been done by, this, uh, by the crowd search army. So looking at this most recent one, you could see that the crowd searcher opened up google.com, searched for the keyword Jean Grey actress, went to page one, okay, didn't find it, went to page two, found the result, visited, the web, this, uh, visited this uh, website that was in the system, and then it started going to inner pages like that. All right, and see so all right so sometimes it's not perfectly displaying the time for each page because this url is really long so it's kind of breaking that i need to fix that so for this one though you can see the time spent and this is how it's normally reported so it was on page one for 11 seconds page two for 16 seconds found the result visited this website for 213 seconds and then it went to an inner page and was on there for 91 seconds and then it was done okay so that's how that person had conducted the search for that one and I want to address this really quickly, a failed search. So a failed search, and this is something people ask about, can, ha can occur for a number of reasons. Um, the most common reason is that the person lost the internet connection. Um, could also be that they shut down their computer, their, you know, they closed out a program, they closed out the program, they had an error. Could be any kind of factor. And that's just, <clears throat> you know, it's expected and there's really no way around it when you're dealing with this many real people in a system. So we, we try to mitigate that, but don't be alarmed by it. You're going to see some failed processes in your activity and you're not deducted any credits in these cases. We just report it to you. 
Um, I don't know why I really report it to you. I guess just to, to, to show you every aspect of this through complete transparency. I, I could remove it, I suppose, and maybe I will in the future just because I don't think there's a real big purpose behind displaying it. But for now, um, that's that's what it does. That's that's why it's there. So now you know. So don't 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 be alarmed. Don't if you submit a ticket to me, I'm going to tell you to watch this tutorial video because I obviously know you didn't watch it. All right, that's how I'm going to know. <laughs> and uh, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to show you in this tutorial video.